Hey guys, so I realized my last video came off as very uh, lectury, and I realized I'm not really leveraging the advantages that this um, form of video has. So I just wanted to sort of go over again um, tangent spaces in particular, and I'll go to cotangent spaces soon, but really just give more of a intuition. Um, I, I, I struggle a little bit to call it a graphical intuition, but an intuition in a general sense of what we're talking about. Here's the thing. We want to generalize vector fields to manifolds. Um, may maybe you need me to explain a little bit why that be important, but I'm sure if you think about it for a while, it becomes obvious. Vector fields describe a lot of physical phenomenon and for one thing we can perform calculus on them but it becomes a problem when we're on a manifold you know we never really think about why vector fields work in rn for example it won't work in a manifold if we use the same definitions we're accustomed to because there's no real sense of global coordinates a manifold can have um, can be such that there aren't any global coordinates. So we need to have a sort of locally intrinsic definition that will allow us to define uh, vector fields. And we claim that's precisely what a tangent space does. So you're probably wondering, oh, Rooney, what's the big deal? We can just embed the manifold in Rn or Rn plus one and yeah, just determine the tangent plane and we get the space of all tangent vectors at the point. And here's the thing. How? Um, maybe you'll come up with a definition, but I can almost guarantee you that it's going to be extremely cumbersome, especially in cases where the manifold is really complicated and we want to do it for every point on the manifold. So if we're willing to put that idea away, we need to come to grips with the idea that there aren't any global coordinates. Um, so let's back up a second. How do we actually define tangent vectors? How do we obtain them? Well, we needed derivatives, and in particular directional derivatives. But if we're just in some arbitrary manifold with some arbitrary local coordinate frame, um, we don't really have a good sense of what a derivative is. But by a property of manifolds, um, you know, that coordinate frame, we can consider it as a map from a neighborhood containing whatever point we're concerned about, and that neighborhood is locally uh, homeomorphic to Rn. So we can just consider um, curves that in, are initialized um, at that point that we are looking at, um, and then we can consider that map under the coordinate um, frame map and determine their derivatives actually in Rn, which is something we can definitely do. And in this way, we determine equivalence classes of curves based on if they have that same derivative in Rn um, at that selected point. And then we can recover the notion of tangent vectors and a tangent space. I claim we can actually do one better. Our whole problem has been that there is no sense of what a directional derivative is on an arbitrary manifold. However, if we generalize you know, what a derivative is using what's called a Leibniz property, we obtain the general notion where anything that satisfies this is called a derivation. And in fact, we can prove that the set of derivations at a point is exactly the same as the set of directional derivatives at that point if we're in Rn, for example. So this appropriately generalizes what a directional derivative is, and it's independent of choice of coordinates, in fact. So this is pretty robust theory, but why is it better than the tangent uh, curves model? Well, it's really a choice of preference, but the definition via derivations is a lot easier to work with, because it's hard to grasp and do calculations with equivalence classes of curves, right? But if we just consider derivations, there's a much more obvious vector space structure, um, which is what all these tangent planes are. The space of tangent vectors is a vector space. Um, 
So there's a much easier sense of that structure and it's a lot easier to conceptualize. Just going back to what we have said before, uh, we've appropriately generalized vector fields. If we consider tangent vectors at a point in the way we've defined that are independent of local coordinates, then they are compatible with each other. We have defined vectors at each point on the manifold. So we've accomplished what we've set out to do. Next time, we'll look at the implications of cotangent spaces and what those mean more intuitively. Um, and then we'll move on to differential forms themselves.